Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's talk from Duncan, who works at Binney's. I hope you enjoy his conversation this morning. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of Duncan's presentation. Over to you, Duncan. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so good morning, everybody. My name is Duncan Batchelor. Um, I'm a lead software developer with a company called Binney's. Um, we're an engineering company and uh, we've got more than uh, 100 year global history um, helping clients in the water and wastewater industry engineering solutions for moving storing cleaning the water etc um, now rsk uh, as a group bought binnies in early 2021 um, and uh, expanded our and their offerings i work in the digital services and uh, we're actually delivering award-winning web-based software solutions. So how I got to where I am, it's I actually took a very unusual path into software development. Um, when I was at school, it was really very much the, the infancy of uh, um, uh, software and uh, uh, computing courses. Uh, so I studied computer science. I was actually the very first year to do uh, the GCSEs and uh, and A level uh, computer science. Uh, but from there, I looked at the university offerings, and there just wasn't the the offerings available um, to get into the software, which is what I wanted to do at that time, and. Uh, um, I also had that thing that I didn't want to be stuck in an office all day. So uh, I took a, a, a very different route and I actually joined the police service uh, down in Sussex where I served for just under 10 years. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, I had an accident in a training exercise. And uh, so I had to leave active service behind. Um, I had to make a really difficult decision at that point uh, and decide where I was going to go, what I was going to do. And uh, I decided to get back into uh, or get, get into the software industry at that time. So I spent seven years studying with the Open University um, at my own expense um, whilst while I was beginning a career and uh, also uh, trying to raise a young family um recovering from uh, from spinal surgery and uh yeah, yeah do, doing everything that a young parent has to do um so i actually became very driven uh very driven to succeed and uh, i progressed really well um i took every opportunity i could to learn and one piece of of, of um, advice i would give to anyone is if you're given an opportunity say yes absolutely say say yes um so yeah i took every opportunity i could to learn um even after i finished my uh, my university training um and to this day I, I continue to learn um i take time time out um, if i'm traveling on a train um any time i'm uh, i'm traveling in the car i i've got something on with with regard to uh, learning software which perhaps sounds a, a little bit sad but uh it's uh, it, it's the way we are um so I, I love to learn new technologies new development techniques best practices um i love my work i, I love doing what i'm doing because we impact on lives um i'm very passionate about about inspiring young people um and you know trying to trying to get people to get into the software software industry um it's it's actually it probably sounds very geeky but it's it's a really exciting place to be uh so my my career so far in software development i've worked for a number of different companies um and i've worked both as a full-time employee and uh, also as a consultant uh, or a contractor um, I've mainly worked in the financial industry. Um, so working with the uh, credit card companies and trading companies, uh, uh, et cetera, up in uh, up in London. 
Um, so I started back in the late 1990s after leaving the police, um, developing import export software. Um, and that was while I was doing my study. Um, I moved into the credit card industry, uh, working uh, for a company called Barclay Card. You might have heard of them. Um, and uh, I was actually instrumental in the software side of the first uh, what they call prepaid credit cards in the UK. Um, so the uh, the cards where you, you you know your parents or yourselves can load money on, and you can then go out and uh, and use as a uh, tap and go type card. Um, so we did the first one of those. Um, I started my own business after that, delivering software consultancy uh, in early 2008, and uh, I ran that for 12 years um, until last year, uh, just before lockdown. Uh, it's quite fortuitous. Um, and uh, yeah, we were delivering uh, software solutions. Um, I worked for a couple of different police services, uh, financial tech houses, the banks, etc. Um, the upside of that is you get a lot, lot more money and a lot more flexibility. The downside is you've got all the stress and the pressure, um, the pressure to keep on the on the top of the wave of technology, um, keeping at the forefront of it. And all of the learning costs and the the time, everything comes down to you. Um, I, I actually paid uh, for myself to fly out to India to do some training where I spent uh, five weeks um, pretty much locked up in a in a hotel and traveling between there and the training center to uh, to get some learning done so I could focus. Um, but just as the pandemic started in 2020, I, uh, I moved back to uh, permanent employment, um, more so that I could spend spend more time at home, less time traveling to work and uh, and working. Um, a three hour commute on a daily basis is a lot of time out of your day and uh, getting that back was an absolute godsend. Um, and then since March 2020, um, I've actually worked from here, from uh, a converted bedroom uh, in our house, which is now my office and uh, my commute is a, a nice gentle stroll across the across the landing. Um, but I promise I'm not in my pajamas. Um, I do actually get dressed and uh, and get ready for work um, a, uh, on a daily basis. Um, so a bit more about uh, Binnie's, who I work for, what I do. Um, so as I say, Binnie's are an engineering consultancy based in the UK. And uh, the sector that I work for is the digital products and services uh, for the water industry. Um, so I'm the lead software developer uh, for several software solutions um, and what we provide is uh, is web based insights into the water industry. I, I promise I will show something more than a bit of text very shortly. So, um, so we supply data analytics um, and we, we pull those from various different uh, sources um, to the point where we actually use satellite imagery. Uh, to fuel one of our uh, software solutions. Um, so we're providing data based on satellite imagery. Uh, so on a day to day basis, I spend a great deal of my time and pretty much the majority of my time uh, developing bespoke software solutions. So we're out talking to talking to clients, determining what they need um, and then developing uh, that and, uh, and delivering that to them. Um, I spend uh, uh, I spend time investigating new ways to to deliver improved solutions. Um, so the, the technology market changes so quickly. Um, it's it, it's ridiculous how fast things change these days. Um, and there's always new and improved ways, new new and improved. Uh, faster ways to get data to the clients. Uh, so I lead a team of developers. I mentor them as and when needed, um, helping them to learn new skills, passing on the experience that uh, that I've gained over my uh, my years, and and assisting in their growth. And I have to admit that's probably one of the well, one of the best things of uh, of my day is uh, when somebody says. 
Thanks for that. That really helped. Uh, I drive and assist in the, the sprint planning of our development cycles. Uh, our development cycle sprint is about two weeks worth of work and we call it a sprint because we're literally working for those two weeks on very focused areas um, and planning those takes quite a bit of time. Um, uh, I liaise with our clients both uh, both directly and indirectly. Sometimes we have uh, um, analysts who, uh, who, who uh, kind of sit between ourselves and the clients and we talk to the analysts, the analysts talk to the clients. Quite often we talk to the clients directly, especially those of us who, who have got more, more, more um, experience of doing that. Um, and uh, we, we spend time quite often on client calls, um, demoing uh, software solutions, taking, uh, taking new ideas, finding out where, where the clients want to drive things and uh, also spending time uh, supporting the existing solutions and resolving uh, problems and, and bugs because there's always going to be bugs in software. Um, I'm sure we've all seen that. And uh, very importantly, no day is the same. Um, every day gives something different. Um, a little bit about climate change, obviously uh, COP26 has been a massive thing going on uh, just recently and uh, both the RSK group and Binnies in particular, um, we're, we're very, very committed on combating climate change. Uh, we're an active supporter of COP26. Um, RSK and Binnies actually sponsored a, uh, a, a day up at COP26 where we were delivering um, ideas about uh, how to uh, build better flood defences, um, basically combat climate change through the uh, through the water industry. Um, and it affects absolutely everything that we do. Um, everything is focused on uh, on, on climate change. Um, for the uh, for the employees, um, Binnies uh, and RSK themselves offer um, schemes such as the cycle to work scheme. Um, they've just started um, an electric vehicle scheme where they're, they're giving you subsidies to uh, to buy electric vehicles. Um, and they're changing the way we travel to and from work. Um, obviously, as I say, I don't have much of a commute these days. So uh, yeah, the, the bike stays in the uh, in the shed at the moment. Um, partly due to the uh, the recent pandemic and uh, moving forwards, we're working a lot more from home, saving a lot on fuel, exhaust emissions, travel, time. There, there's huge amounts of savings there. Um, in our water consultancy, we have a focus on the uh, on the climate change. Um, as I say, from my perspective, focusing on the on the software. Uh, to assist in the automated monitoring of water leaks. Um, so the water supply actually has a lot of sensors built into the uh, into the pipes. And the faster water companies can monitor these uh, these these sensors, the more they can predict when leaks are going to happen, when bursts are going to happen in pipes and preemptively get out there and fix these. So that's going to save water. It's going to save uh, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of the waste that's going on. A lot of the time that company, uh, that sorry, companies that uh, people are are cut off from their water supplies, which I can imagine is quite important to uh, to everybody. Um, and uh, another software solution allows the accurate and accurate and reporting of ecological surveys. Um, so HS2. Uh, a, a massive uh, construction project. Um, we've actually been delivering the technology behind the ecological surveys that have been going on. Um, and uh, a lot of that is removing the uh, the need for paper reports, uh, the the saving of the uh, of the time, literally taking uh, the time down from from months uh, where the ecologists go out, they write their report, the report gets sent into a centre, the centre then take the report, read it, say there's problems with it, send it back, it goes backwards, forward, backwards, forward, 
and it could take months for the report to be loaded up onto a system. Whereas with with, with our uh, uh, software solution, the ecologists are literally putting their data straight into a tablet. Um, it looks exactly the same as the forms that are used to use on paper. Um, they can take photographs with the tablet, put the photographs in, take sound recordings, um, anything that they need to. And the moment they submit that, it can go through to uh, a quality assurance process. So it actually takes it down from months to hours or days to get a, a survey in. Um, so, yeah, it, it's. We're, we're really looking at anything we can do with technology to assist companies in uh, in delivering their their solutions. Um, we're investing in uh, in virtual reality walkthroughs. Um, it's really exciting times, um, so that when you're training engineers, they don't necessarily need to go to a remote site to see how things are set up. They can either look at a screen or put on a virtual reality headset and they can be there at that site. Um, as you can tell, I, I'm a very passionate software developer. Um, I work with a team of passionate developers um, within a company and the entire company is passionate about combating climate change. Um, so the skills and technologies that I use, ah, there's, there's, there's a massive amount. Um, I, I, I use that pretty little picture with, with six monitors. Um, I actually only work with three currently, um, but there's, there's forever something going on. Um, so the term that a lot of people use for me is, uh, is what's called a full stack developer. And that means that I work from the, the front end of what you see on a website, all the way down through the, uh, the the business processes, down to the databases, down to the data analysis, et cetera, et cetera. We literally work with every part of that, uh, that, that software. Um, so I need to have a wide skill set. I need to be able to understand how how the websites work, how you know how how, how the styling works on the website, how it responds to when it's going to be seen on a phone, a tablet, a big wide screen, etc. Um, we also need to understand how the code is going to work behind the scenes, uh, database code, and how everything works together as well. Um, one of the other things I have to do is to be able to ensure that our software is delivered um, to the uh, to the companies and through to our testers. Um, what we've done is actually automated that process so that every two weeks or if needed even quicker, we can automatically deliver the software. Um, we literally click a button and the software gets deployed. Um, so uh, I need, need to be able to uh, to deploy those to to the various different uh, environments. Um, as, as I've said on the bottom there, the rewards are are, are pretty good. They're, uh, they're, it's yeah, it, it's it's great fun. We learn we learn new technologies all the time. We're really sitting at the forefront of of technologies. Um, you know, currently I'm looking into uh, blockchain technologies, which is what runs Bitcoins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, exciting times. Um, just to uh, uh, give a, uh, a very quick demonstration of this is one of the pieces of software that, uh, that we deliver. And bear with me one second. I think it signed me out. Stopping on too long. Technology it always runs very fast when you uh, least expect it. There we go, that looks better. Um, so this system here is actually for the Canal and Rivers Trust. And uh, what they're monitoring is the, uh, the vegetation growth around um, and the water levels of uh, the reservoirs and, uh, and the dams. So 
as you can see here, very quickly, people can see the uh, the movement of particular areas of the dam. The, this uh, this data is all fed from satellites. Uh, we get the satellite data through; it loads automatically, and people can. Uh, sorry, the Canal and Rivers Trust can see very quickly the uh, the effects of what's going on. What they can look at is trends. Um, so, for instance, we can see here there's uh, there's an upward movement. Um, that could mean anything. I, I don't necessarily understand what that means to the client themselves. But for instance, if they see uh, a, a, an unnatural movement within the data, they can actually start to predict what's going to happen. So the more data we have, the uh, the better. Um, so we can see here, for instance, uh, there's actually a set of boreholes um, and uh, what they call piezometers, which measure the uh, the water. So you can see, uh, sorry, the water levels. So you can see around here, we've got um, a bunch of uh, uh, houses. So a lot of people living in and around that area. And they want to be able to see really early on if the water levels are starting to get too high. Um, so they can bleed water off from the uh, from the dam without endangering any of the public around here. Um, so th this this is one of the areas that uh, that we deliver. Um, it's uh, a very fast moving uh, uh, piece of software. Um, so uh, this is actually uh, one of our award winning uh, pieces. And uh, it takes quite a long time to sign in. Really should have put some hold music on here. Just bear with me one second and uh, I say it's it's always great when uh, when our demo systems uh, run nice and fast. Here we go. So the, uh, the the amount of data that we're actually pulling is is getting quite uh, quite huge. So we're having to find ways of of loading the data faster and faster for different companies. Um, and I have to say, it's not usually this slow. Here we go. Um, so very much again, very much trend trend data. Um, but what uh, Yorkshire Water uh, wanted to be able to see was what is their risk score. Um, so we can look at different areas of of Yorkshire Water. They'll have different uh, percentage risk scores. Um, so as you can see, they're they're very much in the green at the moment. They're doing really quite well. All of this is built upon very, very specific data. So right down to how a particular pump is performing. Um, so we could look at, for instance, a, a pump within um, a, a, a particular water treatment works and see how well that particular area is, uh, is working. Uh, I believe that we have Longwood here. Um, so we can actually see here, for instance, this is uh, one of the virtual reality uh, walkgrounds here, and uh, we can actually look directly into a site. So we can look at here, for instance, a flash mixer. Um, I have to say your guess is as good as mine what a flash mixer actually does. Uh, a flocculator tank. You know, there, there are a huge number of, uh, of different terms that uh, I understand pretty much nothing about. Um, fortunately, I don't need to. Um, but as you can see there, people can see directly into their different sites. They can see exactly what's going on. We can pull data from each of these particular items, which then feeds up to a, a risk score at a high level. Um, it, it, it's geeky, but it's uh, but it's really very exciting times. Um, I think pretty much that's uh, that. That's about me. So, uh, any questions? Yes. Thank you very much, Duncan. Yeah, we've got a number of questions have come through here. 
Um, one might relates to your mentioning about the virtual reality walkthroughs, mm. but it's asking you what is the most exciting thing coming in software development? Oh wow! Well, um, I, th I think probably the most exciting thing would be would be blockchain technology. Um, for for me, it's it, it's affecting everything. Um, so currently, if, if you imagine you you go out and you make a transaction with with a person, you you hand them money, you get goods. Now, obviously, we're doing that a lot more online. Um, but if you think about eBay, for instance, you're you're having to trust somebody out there, and you're buying something from somebody that you you don't know. Uh, you don't know if the item exists. You're you're putting a lot of trust out there. Um, now with blockchain technology, what that's actually delivering is is a very centralised um, and encrypted trust, and it it's, it, it builds such a uh, um, such a trust in that you can you, you can't hack it. You 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 know or. I say you can't hack it. Nothing's impossible, but it's incredibly difficult to hack these blockchains. They're agreed upon by a number of different and, and disparate sources. Um, so what, what they're doing is they're really centralizing data rather than everybody having their own version of data. Um, so if you think, for instance, I have I have my my bank account and I have a certain amount of data, I know what's in my bank. Um, nobody else needs to know what's in there. However, if I make a transaction, they need to know about that transaction. They need to be able to ensure that one, I've got the money to pay for it, two, they've got the goods, I need to know they've got the goods, et cetera, et cetera. This blockchain technology is, it is it's going to um, affect everything we do um, in life, really. So yeah, I, I would say that's probably the most exciting thing. Um, I, I'm quite excited about it anyway. <laughs> uh, following on from that, how long does it take to develop software? Oh wow, uh, it, it can be it, it can be any amount of time. Um, so I, I've developed apps um, in, in a matter of days. Um, so uh, I uh, it, during the uh, during the lockdown, I took up uh, um, CNC work and uh, 3D printing. Um, but what I didn't want to do was have to get up from my seat to be able to go out to my shed and uh, see what my my CNC was doing. Um, so I created a, an app for, for my phone. And uh, I can control my, uh, my CNC from my phone, which apparently, according to my wife, is uh, really a very, very sad thing. Um, but yeah, that that took days. Um, other software, it can, t it can take months, um, sometimes years. It's an ongoing process. I mean, the, the 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 approach to software development has changed radically in in the 20, 25 years that, that I've been working. Um, back in the day, 25 years ago, you know, you, you would get a you you'd get a specification come through and that specification would be very detailed, very complete, hundreds of pages long. That would then be delivered on to uh, a team of analysts who would start to break that down and design that. Then it would go on to a software development phase. Then it would go on to the testers. Then it would go on to the client who would say, no, it's not what we wanted at all. Um, and that process could take a year. Um, you know, could, could take a lot longer than that at times. And uh, the the approach to uh, to software, we, uh, we we use a process that's called Agile now, um, and it really is. We're we're literally delivering software to clients every two weeks. So it may be very very small changes they're seeing, but they're seeing changes. They're being able to then use what's being delivered, so they can direct and that they can say to us very very quickly within two weeks. No, it's not quite right. We need to change that. Um, so it, it's it's very much more a fluid process, um, but yeah, I mean the 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 uh, example I showed you that's been in development uh, for for a couple of years. It's actually out with multiple clients, um, so multiple clients clients are, are using different uh, 
different logins to get to different areas of that. Um, we're developing developing things all the time, but yeah, every two weeks there's a there's a new deployment through to uh, through to each of the clients. Brilliant, thank you. And going back to your satellite views, in terms of updates through the satellite, how many times does this update with the software? Uh, currently, we're we're taking a a feed in the form of spreadsheets coming through. Um, this is this is changing very shortly to uh, becoming pretty much live data feeds. So um, we we could take feeds every few seconds, every every second. We could take you know feed, feed multiple feeds a second. It's not a problem. What what tends to happen is the the satellites will feed the data into the uh, what they call the Internet of Things, which sits on the cloud. So this this whole concept of cloud computing, um, you know, Microsoft Azure, um, Amazon, they've got their uh, their cloud, etc. This whole concept of cloud computing, the data goes into the cloud, and it then gets pulled from there um, directly into our our feeds. Um, so, so yeah, we could we could take you know hundreds of feeds a second, thousands of feeds a second. It, it's none of that is is a problem, and that's growing all of the time. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Duncan. We have got other questions, but I'm just aware of the time, so I'd like to say thank you very much for, for the talk. For those schools who joined late, it has been recorded and it will be up on our website for you to watch later next week so you can review with your classes. But I hope you have a good day and thank you very much for attending. Goodbye. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye.